Dear friends and subscribers, your host Ram is once again back with you now with a continuing the series of uh, um, cricket previews, cricket team previews for the ICC T20 World Cup. Now it's the turn to look at the West Indies cricket team. Now West Indies cricket team, as you know, uh, they have been passing through a lot of problems, uh, and then uh, finally, in the, I mean, they didn't have. In the ICC uh, World Cup uh, in the 50 overs format in Australia, uh, they, they, they were absolutely crippled. And then uh, finally, we saw that the West Indies selected a full strength side, which was pretty good to see. Uh, I definitely tweeted uh, and even congratulated Darren Sammy uh, on his. Uh, and Darren Sammy actually tweeted back to me uh, saying that uh, yes, he, he was happy with that. So basically, uh, the West Indies team, uh, and they were uh, selected at full strength and then we had the problem where uh, the, the West Indies cricket board, uh, uh, there was some uh, sort of a, a dispute as far as the uh, payment was concerned, in the sense as far as any monetary uh, reasons were concerned. And then uh, we saw with Dan and Sammy shooting off a letter uh, to the West Indies cricket board and then finally matters uh, getting very amicably resolved and I'm very very happy to see this West Indies cricket team. It's a very very exciting unit and um, I'm really I'm glad to see that but again um, uh, you know uh, I mean uh, we know that all these players are going to play uh, but uh, everything was good the, the team was selected uh, the team had uh, complete uh, it was talked to there. Let's talk about Darren Sammy. He's the captain who's going to be leading the side. And what a wonderful captain he is. He's one uh, who actually has the sights uh, of, uh, I'm sure he has the sights on West Indies actually going and lifting the T20 World Cup. He's such a very determined guy. We've seen that Darren Sammy was coming to the uh, West Indies team and has really got uh, made a lot of transformation into the team. Uh, a transformation of the team as far as the West Indies team is concerned. And we all have the, uh, everyone likes the Calypso magic and uh, we know uh, West Indies are a very, very powerful cricket side. And uh, look at the talent and in fact, uh, West Indies can't be more than happy. I mean, this has been a, a very good year uh, where uh, the, I, I mean, it has shown that even though West Indies players have been uh, struggling with the cricket management uh, and then they have not been able to uh, really make a sort of some uh, noise on the world cricket scene, uh, we have seen that uh, this time the under-19 World Cup champions were West Indies. This was the first time that they won an under-19 World Cup. And that really says something according to me, saying that uh, the, the West Indians are really, really hungry for cricket. And uh, they are they're playing the cricket in that same uh, aggressive manner. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, it's a World Cup. It's under-19 World Cup that it's, itself says uh, that the West Indies roots are very strong. And they are probably building uh, uh, from the roots, uh, grow the plants. So basically, they are building the nucleus now uh, if, uh, to, for the future generations, uh, and that is uh, that is uh, that is great news. And that is something uh, which have definitely uh, boost, boosted the morale of this uh, West Indies cricket team too. And they would also be hoping that, um, uh, like how the West Indies, uh, uh, West Indies, we know, we are, they already uh, lifted one T20 World Cup under the. Um, uh, under the, I mean, they were champions in 2012, as you remember, uh, and Darren Sammy was the uh, captain who was leading the side of the team. Uh, so, uh, definitely, I think West Indies uh, um, looking very strong, and um, as I said, they're moral, but again, um, uh, looking at the problems that they face, I think they're coming up uh, very well. And even though the full strength team was announced, and then comes the uh, news that uh, uh, Sunil Nareen uh, is not going to be playing. Uh, he is wanting to still take some uh, time because to rectify his action. Uh, Keon Pollard has uh, decided that uh, he would still like to rest. Now, that is, um, as you know, Kiron Pollard is a crowd puller. Now, that is a big blow for West Indies, according to me. Because if Kiron Pollard is there, one can definitely say this West Indies team is looking um, uh, greatly strengthened. And with him not there, and you know uh, what a what a mercurial all-rounder he is. He's a crowd puller. Uh, he can he, he can get you those uh, big ones, the biggies can come from Kiron Pollard's bat. Uh, he's, a, he's a very, very tough competitor. Um, and, he's, and you know, even his uh, presence in the field itself 
uh, is something which can invigorate this West Indies team. Uh, so I'm very unhappy that Kieran Pollard is not a firm part of the mix. He's a, he's a wonderful, very useful uh, medium pace bowler. And what an electric fielder he is. Uh, I mean, uh, so many runs he can save on the field. He can come up with some brilliant catches in the deep. And, uh, you know, it's so sad to see uh, that uh, Kieran Pollard uh, is not a part of the mix. I think uh, that really... But uh, they definitely have uh, another guy uh, by the name... Uh, uh, is, uh, I have a feeling his name is Brathwaite, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he is the one who has been included. And uh, he is also... He showed in Australia when he picked up his maiden 50 that he's also another one uh, who could probably go the same way as Kieran Pollard because he's almost typical... His fielding is good, his batting, bowling is good, and I'm looking forward to see him make some waves here uh, in the West Indies team, in the, in, uh, for the West Indies team, in the T20 World Cup, and probably uh, minimize the absence of uh, Kiron Pollard. So that is that would be pretty good to see. So Dan Sami leads the team. Uh, then they have the the uh, the one of those um, uh, what do you call? Uh, I mean, one of the dangerous players in world cricket, along with A.B. de Villiers. None other than Chris Gale. Uh, I mean, he's one uh, who, who who can really, really uh, tear the attack apart, and you could he could actually reduce the bowlers into submission. Now, Chris Gale is going to. And another uh, blow for West Indies was that uh, they were declared at full strength, uh, and then we had Darren Bravo opting out, um, uh, saying that he wants to concentrate on Test matches. Uh, he opted out. Uh, and uh, now they, they still have problems with uh, Lendl Simmons um, uh, with an injury being a doubtful customer for the World Cup. And, uh, and more problems follow in the, fa in the, in the name of Andre Russell. Uh, right now he's having some charges against him uh, of uh, using some substance. And Andre Russell is also under a cloud. So uh, that really says that, um, I, I mean, uh, really feel sorry for West Indies that, you know, such things are happening. Uh, otherwise, I thought this West Indies team uh, would have looked uh, was looking um, uh, greatly strengthened uh, with all those players coming in, and I was pretty excited for them. Uh, Samuel Badri, uh, who is the uh, spinner, Suleiman Bun, the left arm spinner, uh, Dan, uh, Dwayne Bravo is there, so Dan and Bravo won't be there, but Dwayne Bravo is part of the mix, so uh, that that brings a lot of experience um, to, you know, probably Dwayne Bravo is another one. Uh, to whom Dan and Sammy can look up to for any advice because Dwayne Bravo is a pretty experienced bloke. Uh, and Dwayne Bravo, let me tell you, he has good knowledge of Indian conditions. So he is another one who can pass on um, a lot of tips to his captain, Dan and Sammy. Dan and Sammy himself uh, has been playing in the Indian Premier League for quite, uh, quite some time. But uh, I think I, I thought that uh, Dwayne Bravo would be an able ally for Dan and Sammy uh, to give him some advice there, along with Chris Gale. Uh, Andre Fletcher uh, is also there in the mix. Uh, they have Jason Holder. Now, Jason Holder has already approved his medal for the West Indies team uh, by holding the reins of captaincy in the uh, test matches and uh, one-day internationals. He's been successful at that. Um, so, Jason Holder is another one to really look at. Uh, he could really be a, a sort of an all-rounder role that Darren Sammy would play. So, definitely West Indies are having some good all-rounders. Darren Sammy himself, a good all-rounder. Dwayne Bravo, another good all-rounder. Then they have Jason Holder. Chris Gale can be called an all-rounder because of his uh, spin exploits. Uh, then they have Dennis Ramadan, the wicketkeeper. Um, uh, I mean, Manon Samuels, uh, a very, very uh, exciting player in the sense, a uh, very, very uh, graceful player. But uh, what one wants is that Marlon Samuels has ounces of talent. Uh, that has to get translated uh, onto, the, uh, onto his back tomorrow. That is, that is what West Indies would be liking. Uh, and then they have the pace of Jerome Taylor. So the pace balling to me uh, looks a bit dicey here for the West Indies. Uh, West Indies probably are not very well stocked in the pace department. I think that could be their weakness there. Um, but uh, the batsmen have to make, uh, I, I think the batsmen are the ones who have to make up for that uh, weakness uh, that West Indies have in the bowling department. Because uh, if you look at the West Indies bowling, uh, other than Jerome Taylor, uh, you don't see a lot of pace in them. Uh, one, one looks at the team uh, and there's no Kieran Pollard too who could uh, bowl some medium pace and there's no I mean if Andre Russell is also under cloud so uh, I think the pace bowling uh, is looking uh, pretty weak and uh, probably West Indies would be thinking that uh, in, uh, on in, in India uh, they would have turning pitches and they could uh, actually resort to the spinners 
Uh, so that's the precise reason that they have the experience. Suleiman Ben in the squad, Samuel Badri, uh, who is also uh, could be a very, very uh, tough customer. Uh, so uh, that is as far as West Indies are concerned. So West Indies, well, um, I mean, if Kieran Pollard was there, uh, I would have straightforward uh, tell, uh, could have told you that um, I wouldn't be surprised that West Indies would reach. Uh, I mean, they would be uh, they would be pretty strong contenders. Uh, but with Kieran Pollard not there, uh, and also Sunil Narin, who, who really is one uh, who can really, really, um, you know, I, I mean, I mean, he can get wickets, he can uh, really befuddle the batsmen, uh, he can stop the flow of runs, uh, and I think uh, West Indies team are uh, very crippled here. Uh, but definitely, uh, I mean, to what extent they were crippled before, at least that has been solved. So West Indies could still uh, probably. Uh, surprise a few teams here in the T20 World Cup uh, and well this is T20 World Cup so if a team is good on a particular day the team wins so West Indies uh, I would I would actually rate them um, uh, into into such a category uh, and see what they come up with uh, uh, in the in the T20 World Cup matters so now from the West Indies uh, I will go on to the next team and the next team that I'm going to uh, do a preview is Bangladesh now, Bangladesh are another one uh, which uh, definitely tomorrow uh, they are playing in the finals of the Asia Cup. Uh, they are taking on India. Uh, and if, if at all uh, Bangladesh uh, win tomorrow, uh, then I think they will be absolutely buoyed up um, for, the, for the T20 World Cup. But uh, uh, the problem for Bangladesh, now Bangladesh uh, are not certainties in the sense they, they, they are still not sure about their place in the T20 World Cup. The only reason being... Uh, as you know, uh, there is a Group A and a Group B, uh, and for Bangladesh to actually, uh, you know, join the, as the fifth team uh, in Group A, I reckon uh, they they have to really, really play well because uh, they have to uh, get on to the, they have to perform outstandingly because the only the team which actually uh, has the victory uh, will actually proceed towards the second round, and that is the joining the groups. So Bangladesh will be definitely under some lot of pressure. Um, uh, so uh, they, they, they would be, uh, but they are led by a very good captain according to me. I, I thought uh, Mashraf e Murtaza is another, uh, uh, I, think, I think him to be uh, one of a very good uh, thinking captain uh, for Bangladesh. And that is, I think that's a good thing to happen uh, because I've seen that uh, Bangladesh um, uh, are very well served under uh, Mashraf e Murtaza. Yes, it's quite a different thing that uh, uh, Bangladesh are definitely uh, nowadays uh, blessed with uh, a team uh, with uh, rich talent, no doubt about it. Um, the experienced guys are the ones uh, who are the ones who have to really push it, uh, and that would be really uh, uh, saying that the owners would be falling on this blokes. Uh, Shakib Al Hassan, uh, Tami Mikbal as the opener, Mahmudullah, who has already shown that he's a great finisher, and we have seen that Mahmudullah uh, had a very good World Cup in the 50 overs. So he'll be hoping that the T20 World Cup also rolls on well for him. Then Mushfiqur Rahim, another very, very reliable uh, batsman. And then look at the talent that uh, that uh, Bangladesh possesses uh, in a plenty. Uh, one is Soumya Sarkar. What a talented player he is. He already showed that in the uh, in the 50 overs version of the World Cup. Uh, and then they have Sabi Rahman. Uh, Sabi Rahman, according to me, uh, is going to be a sort of a key for Bangladesh chances in this T20 World Cup. The reason that I say that is because he's the one who comes in as the one-drop batsman. And so far, when I've seen, uh, if you see his record in um, uh, recent past, uh, he is the one who has been scoring very consistently for Bangladesh. And he's a very good hitter of the ball too. Uh, once he gets into his stride, when I've seen that Sabi Rahman can really send the ball soaring into the stands. So Sabi Rahman is one that Bangladesh will be definitely looking up for. Um, in, a, in a very big manner. Uh, and then they have uh, Nasir Hussain. Now Nasir Hussain, uh, well, he has not been uh, one who has uh, been given an opportunity in the Asia Cup. Uh, one is probably hoping that tomorrow he takes his place. But uh, but he's also a very utility, he's a real utility player. Now the, the Mustafizur Rahman, uh, definitely not playing in the Asia Cup, but uh, Mustafizur Rahman is one uh, who can really, really turn it on. Uh, because we know what Mustafa Rahman can do. Uh, he's another one whom the opposition would be pretty wary about because we have seen that uh, he has the ability to even 
uh, you go and you know he can clog the runs uh, for the opposition and uh, increase the frustration uh, which could uh, lead to dismissals later on uh, and then they have Al Amin Hussein Taskin Hamad is a very uh, young bowler uh, he has done well in the 50 overs world cup uh, T20 world cup is the first time that he will be playing uh, and I'm sure uh, he also showed against Pakistan uh, as to how he could uh, uh, really bowl very well uh, by bowling maiden overs uh, which is something uh, which has to be commended bowling a maiden over in a t20 cricket uh, is a sort of a luxury i would say and that's what taskin ahmed did and then they have nurul hasan the wicket keeper abu heeder arafat sunny left arm spinner so uh, in my opinion uh, bangladesh definitely are doing well no doubt i mean uh, they are into the t20 uh, Asia Cup uh, T20 tournament finals uh, that itself says a lot about them uh, and uh, especially considering that they're going to be playing in subcontinental conditions um, one could um, uh, if, if at all I mean I'm sure uh, they are the ones who are going to top the group uh, they have to top the group to actually uh, get into the uh, second round of the T20 World Cup and if they are able to do it uh, then uh, that would be great for them uh, but definitely um, to me uh, looking at the way things have been going, uh, I would definitely say that uh, Bangladesh are also uh, are looking pretty strong uh, and uh, one is really looking forward uh, to see uh, how they translate, uh, how, how, how their immense talent um, uh, you know, uh, is translated uh, into this uh, T20 World Cup. Well, so that is as far as Bangladesh uh, um, previous concern. So that really... Uh, 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 ends my preview as far as the top teams are concerned. Uh, so I'll be still continuing with my cricket previews. But uh, uh, so right now uh, with this Bangladesh cricket preview, I'm not concluding. I I'm still going to do some previews. I'm going to look at the associate teams in this uh, uh, tournament too. So till such time I come back, uh, just uh, hold it for now uh, and please.